Um, we're going to look at this man, John Richard Wimber. Vi skal se på en mand, John Richard Wimber. I was asked uh, when I came here, would you speak about this? Would you speak about someone important to you? Jeg blev bedt om, da jeg kom, at tale om en, der har været vigtig for mig. And, and I chose a contemporary believer. Og jeg valgte en nutidig troende. Not someone from the distant past. Ikke en fra en fjern fortid. Because I believe this man John Wimber still influences the church today. For jeg tror på at denne mand John Wimber han stadigvæk påvirker kirken i dag. So we're going to watch a little uh, two minute clip from uh, YouTube. Vi skal se et lille klip på to minutter fra YouTube. I don't know what the clip is, but I'm looking forward to seeing it. Jeg ved ikke hvad klippet er, men jeg glæder mig til at se det sammen med jer. Then we're going to look at this man's life. Og så skal vi se på hans liv. Something of his teaching. Noget af hans uh, læring. And ask ourselves, Lord, what does this mean for me? Og vi skal spørge os selv, Herre, hvad betyder det her for mig? So let's uh, just quickly look at this uh, clip. Så lad os se klippet nu. But Jesus then came and in the process of time introduced the kingdom of God. In Mark, the first chapter, we find Jesus come proclaiming the kingdom. He says, the kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe. In my opinion, in Mark 1.14, we have the thesis statement of Jesus. Everything that he said or did from that point forward was more uh, clarification, was more commentary on that one statement. All that Jesus taught about was the kingdom. All that Jesus did was the kingdom. And we need both the doing and the telling in order to get the full message concerning the kingdom and the Lord Jesus Christ. But it's in the presentation of the kingdom that we have the illumination of God. Without the word of God, we have no illumination in this world. But with the presentation, with the, with the declaration, with the word, we have illumination. But without the works of God, we have no illustration. We need both the illumination and the illustration. We need the word and the works if we're to have the complete message concerning Jesus Christ. And it's at that point that we have brought something new and something a little different to many of you. As you've gathered with me in the halls and embraced me in the streets, you've told me, it's been so good. We've been here before. We came last year, or we were at a, one of the satellite events last year, and we saw the Spirit of God move. We saw the power of God move. We saw people receiving and experiencing uh, various kinds of works of the Spirit, and it changed our lives. It changed our minds. It changed our perspectives. It changed our paradigms. We're now looking at things differently. When we read the New Testament, we're reading it with new understanding now as we see the various kinds of things occurring in the lives of the apostles and in the lives of those that were surrounding Jesus. And so the kingdom of God is with us. The kingdom of God is within us. The kingdom of God is upon us. The kingdom of God is here in this present evil age, and yet it is at a time yet to come. The kingdom has not been fulfilled. It's not completed. When you went to a John Wimber meeting, you didn't just hear about God, you saw what God was doing. Da du tog et møde til et møde med John Wimber, så hørte du ikke kun om Gud, men du så, hvad Gud han gjorde. He talked there about the words of God, but also the works of God. Her snakker han både om Guds ord, men også om Guds handling. I want to extend that even further. Actually, what you saw with Wimber were words, works, and wonders. Og vi kan godt tage det et skridt videre og sige, det du så med John Wimber, det var øh, ord. As someone said to me just coming into the tent just now. Det, det var både øh, ord, øh, handling og under. Og der var en der sagde til mig, da jeg kom ind i teltet nu. You, you were never quite sure what was going to happen next. Man var aldrig helt sikker på, hvad der skulle ske. Because God was present. His kingdom is near. For Guds, Gud var til stede. Guds rige var nær. I first saw John Wimber in person in 1984 in London. Jeg mødte første gang John Wimber i 1994 i London. In those days I was a new Christian. I de dage var jeg ny omvendt kristen. I worked as a paramedic. Jeg arbejdede som faldgræder. I knew injuries when I saw them. Jeg kendte til skader når jeg så dem. I knew about illnesses. Jeg kendte til sygdomme. I knew that when you were dead, you were dead. Jeg vidste når man var død, så man var død. And John Wimber taught that the kingdom of God is at hand and nothing is impossible with God. Gud og John Wimber underviste om at Guds rige er nær og intet er umuligt for Gud. One of the things that first struck me was this. En af de ting der først slog mig var det her. He would never finish a session. 
Han ville aldrig øh, slutte sin undervisning. Just with words. Kun med ord. He always expected the Lord himself to confirm the message preached. Han forventede altid at Herren selv ville bekræfte den øh, undervisning der havde været. At the first conference I went to. Ved den første konference jeg tog til. He spoke on healing. Snakkede han om helbredelse. And as was his custom at the end he did clinic time. Og som det, han havde for vane mod slutningen så lavede han kliniktid. If he preached about healing he expected God to heal. Hvis han havde undervist om helbredelse så forventede han at Gud ville helbrede. Key to the way that Wimber operated was to listen or look for the father's leading. Nøglen til det som John Wimber han, hans virke det var at se på hvad Gud han forventede at gøre, hvad han ville gøre. In John 5 in verse 19. I Johannes 5 kapitel 19. Jesus says this. Der siger Jesus følgende. I tell you the truth. Jeg siger jeg sandelig siger jeg. The son can do nothing by himself. Sønnen kan ikke gøre noget af sig selv. He can only do what he sees the father doing. Og han kan kun gøre det han har set fra faderen. This was a key understanding for John Wimber. Det her, det var nøglen til forståelsen for John Wimber. If Jesus, the son of God, could only do what he saw the father doing. Hvis Jesus, som er Guds søn, kun kan gøre det som han har set faderen gøre. That's how we need to operate as well. Så det er også sådan vi skal handle. So the end of this session that Wimber taught on healing. Så i slutningen af det her møde hvor John Wimber han underviste om helbredelse. He asked father, what are you doing now? Spurgte han far, hvad gør du nu? And he waited. Og han ventede. And he listened. Og han lyttede. And we all wondered what would happen next. Vi tænkte alle sammen, hvad sker der med nu? Did any of you go to some of these conferences? Er der nogen af jer der, der har været til de her konferencer? A few of you. Uh, enkelt af You never knew what was going to happen, did you? Man vidste aldrig hvad der skulle ske, vel? And he looked around. Og han så sig omkring. He said there's a woman here today with a large swelling over her knee. Der er en kvinde her i dag, sagde han, der har en stor samling over knæet, en hævelse. God wants to heal you. Gud vil helbrede dig. 2000 people. Der var 2000 mennesker. No one moved. Der var ikke en der rørte sig. I am the sort of person who gets embarrassed when I think other people are going to look stupid. Jeg er den slags menneske som bliver pinligt berørt når jeg tror at andre mennesker kommer til at se dumme ud. I remember shrinking down in my chair. Jeg kan huske at krumme træer tær og sank tilbage i sædet. Oh no. Oh no. It's not going to happen. Det sker ikke. You did it last Thursday when you were running for the bus. Du gjorde det sidste torsdag, da du det skete sidste torsdag, da du løb efter bussen. The father showed me. Faren har vist mig det. No one moved. Der var ikke en der rørte sig. I got a little bit lower. Jeg sank lidt længere ned. I think you sat over here. Jeg tror det er en der sidder herover. No one moved. Der var ikke en der rørte sig. I wanted to leave. Jeg havde lyst til at forlade stedet. I think you're in this row here. Jeg tror du sidder i den her række. It's me. Det er mig. Says an older lady. Siger en ældre kvinde. And she walks to the front. Og hun går op foran. And John Wimber says, uh, "Have you got a big swelling over your knee?" John Wimber siger, "Har du en stor hævelse hen over knæet?" And she lifts her blue skirt above her knee, and there's a large swelling. Og hun løfter sin blå nederdel op over knæet, og man kan se en hævelse. I'm a paramedic. I I know what I'm looking at. Jeg er faldgræder. Jeg ved hvad jeg ser på. That's not going quickly. Det er ikke noget der bare forsvinder hurtigt. How did you do it? Hvordan skete det? Well, last Thursday I was running for the bus. Uh, sidste torsdag løb jeg efter bussen. Wow, wow. Faith rises. Tro rejser sig. The presence of God is thick. Guds nærvær er tykt åbenbart. She puts the skirt down. John Wimber prays a very short prayer. Hun trækker neddelen ned og John Wimber han beder en kort bøn. We all started praying in American accents after what we saw. Vi begyndte alle sammen at bede med amerikansk accent efter det vi havde set. Oh God, you're wonderful. Oh God, du er fantastisk. Swelling go in Jesus name. Hævningen skal forsvinde i Jesu navn. And he would chew gum and so we would chew gum as well. Og han tykkede tyk gummi så det gjorde vi også. She lifted the skirt. Hun løftede nederdelen igen. Completely gone. Fuldstændig forsvundet. Inwardly I remember going oh no in in him I think that oh no because I knew I could never be the same for I wished I could never be the same way my whole world view had changed mit verdensbillede var forandret my whole model of what it was to 
To be a Christian had changed in a moment. Min forståelse af hvad det ville sige at være kristen, det var forandret i et øjeblik. He had taken the scriptures and fleshed them out in front of our eyes. Han havde taget skriften og udfoldet det foran vores øjne. John Wimber was a very ordinary man. John Wimber var en almindelig herre. Born in, on the 25th of February 1934 in Missouri. Han blev født den 25. februar 1934 i Missouri. Born into a non-religious family. Han blev født ind i en ikke religiøs familie. He was a musician, a keyboard player. Han var musiker, spillede keyboard. He was in a band called the Paramours. Han spillede med et band der hed Paramours. One night the Paramours were doing a gig. Der var en aften de spillede koncert. And uh, they sang this great song. De sang en skøn sang. And there was a black American uh, US Marine in the in the audience. Der var en sort amerikaner en uh, soldat. He, so, he was so impressed by the song. Han var så imponeret af sangen. Did he shout it out? Han råbte. In the sort of ethnic language of his day. Det sådan det etniske sprog han havde i på den tid. That was righteous, brothers. Det var helligt, kære brødre. And the Paramours became the righteous brothers. Og Paramours ender navn til de hellige brødre eller de retfærdige brødre. Have you heard of the righteous brothers? Har I heard of the righteous brothers? The righteous brothers. Are you old enough? Er I gamle nok? <laughs> Three of you. Okay. That's right. They 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 they, uh, they sang songs like uh, um, Unchained Melody. De sang sange som Unchained Melody. You've lost that love and feeling. Du mister den kærlige fornemmelse. Very good. Georgia on my mind. Georgia on my mind. Rock and roll heaven. Rock and roll heaven. We had a bit of rock and roll heaven last night, didn't we? we had that a was brilliant. Rock and roll hymn and go after something. He was this musician. Han var en musiker. He was a bad boy. Han var en slem fyr. Not because he was a musician. Ikke fordi han var musiker. But uh, Christianity Today magazine described him before he came to Christ. Men magasinet Christianity Today, det amerikanske kristne blad, beskrev ham før han kom til tro sådan lidt. They described him as a beer guzzling, drug abusing pop musician. Som en øldrækkende heroin misbruger popmusiker. Who was converted to Christ at the age of 29. Han blev omvendt til Kristus som 29 år. While chain smoking his way through a Quaker. Bible study group. Men sådan kædrøg sig sin vej igennem et kvæker bibelstudie. I like that. Det kan jeg godt lide. I love the idea because it's true that God takes ordinary people. Jeg kan godt lide ideen, fordi det er sandt, at Gud han tager almindelige people. mennesker, oprørske mennesker. And he makes them into something in Christ. Og han gør dem til noget nyt i Kristus. John started going to the Quaker church. John begyndte at gå i Quaker kirken. I'm going to just uh, read you a, a, a meeting he had on one Sunday morning with one of the leaders. Det skal bare lige fortælle jer om et møde han havde en søndag morgen med en af lederne. At the end of the service John gets to the door. Efter gudstjenesten så går John ned til døren. There's a leader shaking hands and saying goodbye. Og der er en leder der står og giver hånd og siger farvel. John says to him. John siger til ham. When do we do get to do the stuff? Hvornår sker det? What stuff says the leader? Hvad skal ske, spørger lederen. You know, the stuff in the Bible. Du ved, det der der sker i Bibelen. The stuff that Jesus did. Alt det som Jesus han gjorde. Healing the sick. Han helbredte de syge. Raising the dead. Oprejste de døde. Healing the blind. Helbrede de blinde. You know, stuff like that. Du ved, sådan ting, det skal ske. The leader looked at him. Lederen så på ham. Oh well, we we don't do that stuff anymore. Uh, den slags ting sker ikke mere. John replied, "You don't." Og John sagde, "Sker det ikke?" Then what do you do? Hvad sker der så her? Well, said the leader. Hvad sagde lederen? We do what we did here this morning. Vi gør det som der skete her den her morgen. And John answered. Og John svarede. You mean, I gave up drugs for this? Du mener, jeg vendte ryggen til 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 narko for det her? What a message for our day. We get buskap til vores tid. I gave up wine, women in song for this. Jeg har opgivet kvinder og vin og sang for det her. I enjoyed wine, women in song. Jeg kunne faktisk ret godt lide kvinder, alkohol og sang. The Bible says even sin has pleasure for a season. Bibelen siger at selv synd er jo dejligt i en overgang, i en tid. 
Like John Wimber, I, I didn't give up that for religion. Ligesom John Wimber, så opgav jeg heller ikke det der for religion. I gave it up for Jesus. Jeg opgav det for Jesus. John Wimber had this great quest. John Wimber, han var på et tokt. To imitate Christ and to make Christ known. Et tokt for at imitere efterligne Kristus og gøre Kristus kendt. In his catchphrase, he has many catchphrases. En af hans sloganer var to do the stuff. For det til at ske, do the stuff. The stuff that Jesus did. For det til at ske som det som Jesus gjorde. So he began praying for the sick. Han begyndte at bede for de syge. It's reported that he prayed for 2000 people before he saw anybody healed. Det blev fortalt at han har bad for over 2000 mennesker før han så en eneste helbredelse. Can you imagine that? Forestil dig det. Can you imagine? You've prayed for one and a half thousand people, no one gets anything. Forestil dig du har bedt for halvanden tusind mennesker og der ikke der sker ikke noget som helst. But he used to say this. Men han begyndte at han When I see the Lord. Det her. Når jeg ser Herren. When I see him face to face. Når jeg ser Herren ansigt til ansigt. I'm going to say, Lord, I tried to do your book. Vil han, vil han sige, her jeg prøvede at forsøge at gøre efter at leve din bog. In his early days as a Christian, he was in the Quaker Church still. Som en yngre kristen var han stadig i Quaker Kirken. In Yorba Linda, California. I Kalifornien. He led hundreds to Christ. Han ledte hundredvis af mennesker til Kristus. By 1970, he was leading 11 different Bible study groups. I 1970 der ledte han 11 forskellige bibelstudiegrupper. With more than 500 people involved. Med over 500 mennesker involveret. By 1974, he became founding director of the Department of Church Growth. I 1974 der var han den stiftende leder af Department of Church Growth, altså afdelingen for kirkevækst. At the Fuller Institute of Evangelism and Church Growth. Ved universitetet der hedder Fuller Institute of Evangelism and Church Growth. It wasn't just a theory. Det var ikke bare teori. He knew how to grow churches. Han vidste hvordan man får kirken til at vokse. Or at least he knew how to sow the seed and water it, and then God would grow the church. Eller det mest vidste han hvordan man planter frøet og vander det, og så vil Gud få det til at vokse. A church began to meet in his home. Og kirken begyndte at møde i hans hjem. It became charismatic and split from the Quaker group. Den blev karismatisk og brød væk fra kvækerne. It became the Anaheim Christian Anaheim Vineyard Christian Fellowship. Det blev til Anaheim Vineyard Christian Fellowship. He pastored that church from 77 to 94. Han var præst i den kirke fra 77 til 94. I went there in 1990. Jeg tog derhen til i 1990. I went to one of the other vineyard churches in Lancaster. Uh, north of Los Angeles. Det tog til en af de andre vineyard kirker i Lancaster, uh, nord for uh, Los Angeles. As Anaheim. well as Anaheim, where John was pastoring and teaching. Så vel som i Anaheim, der hvor John han var pastor og What he taught in the conferences, he did in the local church. Det som han underviste i til konferencerne, det udførte han i de lokale kirker. For me, with my new wine hat on, it's so important we take this to the local church. For mig. Når jeg har min nye vejen kasket på, så tænker jeg, at det er så vigtigt, at vi tager det her med til vores lokale kirker. I, what I loved about John Wimber, one of the things I loved was he was so naturally supernatural. En af de ting, som jeg synes var fantastisk ved John Wimber, det var, at han var naturligt overnaturlig. He was planting churches everywhere. Han plantede kirker overalt. Church planting is the best form of evangelism he said. Han sagde kirkeplanting det er den bedste form for evangelisering. One of the reasons is this. En af årsagerne er det. Everybody gets to play. Alle får lov til at være med. I'll come back to that in a minute. Og det vender jeg tilbage til lidt. But we get so used to a church setting where a few do something on stage and the rest consume. Men vi bliver så vant til et kirke et samfund hvor der er nogle enkelte der optræder op på scenen og så resten de sidder bare og kigger. Wimber's theology of the priesthood of all believers said, "No, everybody, his words, everybody gets to play." John Wimber's theology of the Almine Prestedømme, når han udførte det, så var det alle får lov til at lege med. To the pastors here, to the leaders here. Og til præsterne og lederne her i dag. How do we get all of our people to play? Hvordan får vi alle til at lege med? To be involved in the ministry of Christ. Til at være involveret i Kristi uh, tjeneste. Wimber's theology was based on the works of a man called George Eldon Ladd. Wimber's theology them are based on arbeid of a man who was called George Wimber Ladd. George, George Eldon Ladd. George Eldon Ladd. It would have been good if it was John Wimber Ladd, George, but it wasn't. It was George Eldon. George, George Eldon Ladd. 
Time doesn't allow me, but let me try and summarize his kingdom theology. Jeg har ikke så meget tid, men lad mig lige prøve at opsummere kort hans gudsrigs teologi. God reigns over sin. Gud er herre over synd. Jesus in every way like us yet without sin. Jesus er på alle måder som os, men uden synd. Defeated it on the cross. Han øh, overvandt over det på, på korset. That's the kingdom. Det er riget. God rules over sin. Gud hersker over synd. God rules over sickness. Gud hersker over sygdom. Not one person who came to Jesus came to Jesus was sent away without a healing. Der var ikke en der kom til Jesus og som blev sendt væk uden at være blevet helbredt. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 8. The reason the son of God came was to destroy the works of the devil. Johan, først Johannes brev siger årsagen til at Guds søn kom var for at ødelægge uh, Satans arbejde. Sickness a work of the devil ultimately. Sygdom er djævelens værk. Many different reasons. Der er mange forskellige årsager. Does it mean you sin? Men det betyder ikke at du har syndet. But God hates sickness. Men Gud hader sygdom. God rules over sin. God rules over sickness. God rules over demons. Gud hersker over synd. Gud hersker over sygdom. Gud hersker over dæmoner. They flee in Jesus name. De flygter i Jesu navn. God rules over nature. Gud hersker over naturen. Even the wind and the waves obey him. Selv vinden og bølgerne adlyder ham. God rules over death. Gud hersker over død. On the third day he rose again. På den tredje dag op stod han igen. You can't keep a good god down. Du kan ikke holde en god god gud nede. This is the kingdom. Det er riget. And the kingdom as we heard is at hand is near. Og riget som vi hørte, det er nær. This was the theology that convinced Wimber that Spiritual gifts were for today. Og det var den teologi som overbeviste Wimber om at åndelige gaver de hører that til. God utid. was delegating his authority and power to every believer. Gud uddelegerede sin magt og sin autoritet til alle troende. With this theology in place. Med den her teologi på plads. One of the geniuses of John Wimber was this. Var en af John Wimbers genialiteter det her. He gave us a theology. Han gav os en teologi. He gave us a model. Og han gav os en model. And he gave us a practice. Og han gav os en praksis. Too often in our churches. Alt for ofte i vores kirker. We give a theology. Giver vi en teologi. Theology is good. Teologi er godt. Scripture is vital. Skriften er livsnødvendig. But Wimber said, Men it's Wimber... not enough to be Bible literate. You need to be Bible obedient. Det er ikke nok, sagde Wimber, at kunne kende sin Bibel, men du skal også adlyde din Bibel. If the Bible says heal the sick in Jesus name, hvis Bibelen siger helbred de syge i Jesu navn, and we give people no idea how to do that, vi ikke viser folk hvordan man gør det. We heap guilt and condemnation on them. Så giver vi i skaden for skyld og skam. He gave us a theology. Han gav os en teologi. He gave us a model. Han gav os en model. A simple five point model. En simpel fem punkter fem punkters model. Now, God cannot be reduced to models or techniques. Gud kan selvfølgelig ikke reduceres til teknikker eller modeller. But it got us started. Men det fik os startet. Ask him what the problem is. Spørg hvad problemet er. I've got a bad shoulder. Jeg har en dårlig skulder. May I put my hand on your shoulder? Må jeg lægge min hånd på din skulder? Sure. Okay. Invite the Holy Spirit. Og så inviter Helligånden. Try and ask the Spirit how he wants you to pray. Prøv at spørg Helligånden hvordan han ønsker du skal bede. Shoulder be healed in Jesus name. Skulder blive helbredt i Jesu navn. Or shoulder, start moving. Eller skulder begynder at bevæge dig. Or whatever it might be. Eller hvad end det kan være. Invite the Holy Spirit, ask him how to pray. Inviter Helligånden og spørg ham om hvordan du skal bede. Bless what you see God doing. Velsign det som du ser Gud gøre. Ask him what they're doing. Og spørg ham hvad han laver. Simple model. En simpel model. That he would show us again and again and again. Som han viste os igen og igen og igen. Again a challenge to us. Igen en udfordring til os. Do we try and show people as we disciple them what it looks like? Prøv at vise mennesker som vi gør til disciple, hvad det ser ud som om. At the end of every talk. I ved slutningen af hver hans undervisninger. Clinic time. Så var der klinik tid. Something at the front. Der skete et eller andet op foran. Watch this. Prøv at se det her. Look what God is doing. Se hvad Gud gør. Do you see that what's on the pages of the Bible is now happening here? Kan du se det der er på siderne i Bibelen, det sker lige her. Theology, teologi, model, model, practice, praksis. Go and do it. Gå ud og gør det. Make opportunities. Skab muligheder. Take a team. Tag et team. Go on a team. Gå ud på et, med et team, et hold. Practice in the workplace. Og udfør det i handling i praksis. 
I'm really challenged by this still. Det udfordrer mig stadigvæk. So often I tell my people this is what you've got to do. Det er så ofte jeg fortæller mine men folk det er det her I skal gøre. Rather than it, this is how to do it. Det for at sige sådan gør du. I was hugely uh, influenced by this and began to pray over everything that moved. Jeg blev meget øh, påvirket af det her og begyndte at bede over alt som bevægede sig. About that time my mother got breast cancer. Og omkring den tid så fik min mor brystkræft. She went to the hospital that all the results were there she she had cancer. Hun tog til hospitalet og resultaterne var klare hun havde kræft. And people prayed. I must admit I didn't pray much because you know when it's very close to home it's difficult to pray sometimes. Folk bad for en jeg må godt jeg må indrømme jeg bad ikke særlig meget fordi til tider når det er meget tæt på så er det svært at bede. I was more fearful than faithful. Jeg var mere frygtsom end trofast. But the church prayed. Men kirken bad. The cancer went. Sorry? The cancer went. Kraften forsvandt. All the tests showed, medically proven. Alle prøverne viste, og det er medicinsk bevist. No sign. Der var ingen tegn. No operation required. Der var ikke behov for en operation. That was 1984-1985. She's still alive. Hun lever stadigvæk. She's in her 80s. Hun er i 80'erne. Going strong. Og hun er stadigvæk stærk. Theology, model, practice. Theologi, model, praksis. Testimonies. Og vidnesbyrd. Feeding faith back into the church. Vidnesbyrd, der brødføder troen i kirken. John Wimber's model was very based on the word of knowledge. Wimber's model den var baseret meget på øh, kunskab om ordets, ordets kunskab. A revelatory insight from the Father. Så en øh, revelation, altså øh, afslørende øh, vidnesbyrd om Faderen. So it became important for him not just to give us a model for healing. Det var vigtigt for ham ikke bare at give os en model for helbredelse. <coughs> but it teaches in the prophetic. Men også at undervise os profetisk. How do I hear from God? How do I see from God? What does that look like? What does that feel like? Hvordan hører jeg fra Gud? Hvordan ser jeg fra Gud? Hvad føles det? Hvordan ser det ud? We went away from one of those first conferences listening to the father. Vi tog væk fra den der første konference og lyttede til faderen. I drove up a road with my friend Mike. Jeg tog op og kørte langs vejen med min ven Mike. There was a young lady at the side of the road thumbing a lift. Og der var en ung kvinde der stod ved siden af vejen og hitchede et lift. He said we've got to stop. The father said stop and tell her about Jesus. Faren sagde stop og fortæl hende om Jesus. He was driving. Han kørte. I said I've got the gift of being a coward. Anyone got that gift? <laughs> jeg sagde, jeg har ondskaven at være en kujon. Er der nogen andre der har den gave? No one got that gift. I've got anyone got er that gift? Der er nogen der har gaven at være kujon. I've also got the gift of excuses. Anyone got the gift of excuses? Jeg har også undskyldningernes gave. I said we're not allowed to stop on this road, so we can't. Jeg sagde, det er ikke lovligt at stoppe på den her vej, så desværre det kan vi ikke. So we drove on. Så vi kørte videre. He said, no, the father says we've got to stop. Han sagde, nej, faren siger, at vi skal stoppe. Eventually, I said, turn around, we'll go back. If she's still there, it's a sign. Og så sagde jeg, okay, vi vender om. Hvis hun stadig er der, så er det et tegn. She was still there. Hun var der stadig. <clears throat> I ran across the road. Jeg løb hen over vejen. While my friend, who'd heard from God, went to park the car. Mens min, min ven, der havde hørt fra Gud, han var hen og parkere bilen. As I walked down towards her, I thought, whatever do I say? Som jeg gik ned hen mod hende, så tænkte jeg, hvad i alverden skal jeg sige? Only do what you see the father doing. Skal kun gøre det som du ser faderen gøre. And the voice came to me. Og en stemme kom til mig. In my mind, in my thinking, in my imagination. I min tanke, i min øh, tankespil. Tell her she'll never find peace until she stops running. Sig til hende, du, du vil aldrig finde fred, medmindre du holder op med at løbe. So I did. Så det gjorde jeg. Wimber used to say. Wimber plejede at sige. I'm a fool for Christ. Jeg er et fjols for Herren. Who's fool are you? Hvis fjols er du. I felt such a fool. Jeg følte mig som sådan en fjols. She said I don't know what you mean. Hun sagde, jeg ved ikke hvad du mener. And I didn't either. Og jeg, det gjorde jeg heller ikke. But I had nowhere else to go because my friend was parking the car. Men der var ikke nogen sted jeg kunne gå hen fordi min ven parkerede bilen. We talked with her, we prayed with her. Vi snakkede med hende, vi bad for hende. We said goodbye. Vi sagde farvel. Next day. Den næste dag. 11 o'clock at night. Klang 11 om aftenen. My friend says. Siger min ven. Let's go back to the same place. She'll be there. Lad os tage tilbage til det samme sted. Hun er der. So we got in the car. Så vi hoppede i bilen. We went to the same bit. Vi tog hen til det sted, samme she, sted på vejen. She stood there. Hun stod der. She said, "I know exactly what you mean." Hun sagde, "Jeg ved præcis hvad du mener." When you say, "I'll never find peace until I've stopped running." Når du siger, "Jeg finder aldrig fred før jeg holder op med at løbe." I'm running from my father. Jeg løber væk fra min far. 
I don't know where I'm running, but I can't find peace. Jeg ved ikke hvor jeg løber hen, men jeg kan ikke finde fred. She went, we went to a burger bar. Vi tog til et burgerbar. And she gave her life to Christ. Hun gav sit liv til Kristus. And she moved in with my wife and family. Hun flyttede ind sammen med min kone og min familie. Og blev medlem af vores kirke. Power evangelism that's called. Det er kraftfuld evangelisering. We prayed for her foot and it got healed. Vi bad for hendes fod og den blev helbredt. She encountered Jesus on the side of that road. Hun mødte Jesus ved siden af den vej. I only do what I see the Father doing. Jeg gør kun det som jeg ser Faderen gøre. John Wimber taught us to do this. Det lærte vi af John Wimber. He was greatly into what he called the equipping of the saints. Han var meget inde i udrustningen af de hellige. Based on Ephesians 4 and verse 12. Baseret på Efeserbrevet 4 12. You see the role of the apostle, the prophet, the pastor, the teacher, the evangelist is not to do it but to equip the people of God to do it. Apostlenes evangelist, evangelistens, præstens, ledernes opgave, det er ikke at gøre det, men at udruste disciplene til at gøre det. It's not about the individual. Det handler ikke om individet. It's about the people. Det handler om folket. This moved us from a Pentecostal model of the anointed man of God riding into town and doing it all. Og det er det flyttet os fra den model, den øh, pinse modellen måske, øh, hvor der er en salvet af Herren der rider ind i byen. And it released the priesthood of all believers. Og det frigjorde det almindelige universelle præstedømme. The church began to rise up. Øh, kirken rejste sig op. The power was no longer with the leaders. Magten og kraften lå ikke længere hos lederne. The professional Christians. Ikke de professionelle kristne. This was right back to the scriptures. Det var helt tilbage til skriften. The people of God rising up. Guds folk rejser sig. Proclaiming Jesus with words. De proklamerer Jesus med Gud, med ord. Proclaiming Jesus with works. De proklamerer Jesus med deres handlinger. Proclaiming Jesus with the wonders of God. Og de proklamerer Jesus med Guds under. And ordinary men and women and children. Og almindelige mænd, kvinder og børn began to see what god could do through them begynd at se hvad gud kunne gøre igennem dem i deliberately include children og jeg inkluderer bevidst børn they are the ones we need to learn from not the other way around when det, it comes to believing this når det kommer til at tro det her så er det dem vi skal lære fra og ikke den anden vej rundt one of the children in our church back in london en af vores børn i vores kirke tilbage i london was told by her little 9 year old friend i think about 9 eller en af medlemmerne fik at vide af sin øh, sin datter på 9 My t- my dentist is upset because my tooth is growing the wrong way. Min tandlæge uh, han er uh, han er bekymret fordi min tand den vokser den forkerte vej. And this child said I'll pray for you. Og det andet, det var så det andet barn der sagde jeg vil bede for dig. Tooth in Jesus name turn around. Tand i Jesu, i Jesu navn vend dig om. And when I heard that I thought oh help. Da jeg hørte det tænkte jeg hjælp. She went back to the dentist. Hun tog tilbage til tandlægen. You know what the end of the story is already. Og ved allerede hvordan historien slutter. Wimber never told that everybody got healed. Vi fik aldrig at vide at alle blev helbredt. Nej, Wimber sagde aldrig at det var alle blev helbredt. He told that the is here. Han sagde Guds rige er her. Guds rige er nær. We can reach out and touch it. Vi kan række ud og og røre det. But there's still the fullness to come. Men det bliver først fuldbragt senere. Not everybody does get healed. Det er ikke alle der bliver helbredt. Not every prophetic word is 100% from God. Det er ikke alle profetiske ord der er 100% fra Herren. He always would say, I have no miracle up my sleeves or in my pockets. Jeg har ikke nogen mirakler, sagde han altid, op i mine ærmer eller i mine lommer. I always feel a day late and a dollar short. Jeg føler altid at jeg kommer en dag for sent, da jeg mangler en dollar. But we've got a great God. Men vi har en stor Gud. As he began to come over to England, he befriended some influential Christian leaders. Efter han som han begyndte at komme mere og mere til England også, så blev han ven med nogle indflydelsesrige kristne. One of them was Bishop David Pitches. En af dem var Biskop David Pitches. And uh, David founded New Wine. David som var en grundlægger af New Wine. And I have the great privilege of uh, working for New Wine, overseeing the international work we do. Og det er privilegiet for mig at arbejde med New Wines internationale arbejde. We work in the USA, in New Zealand, in South Africa, in the Netherlands, in Scandinavia. Vi arbejder i USA, Sydafrika, New Zealand, Holland, Skandinavien. We don't preach John Wimber. Vi prædiker ikke John Wimber. He was a man. Han var bare et menneske. He was a man who was constantly learning. Et menneske der vedblev med at lære. 
I went to a small intimate conference with him once. Jeg tog en gang til en mindre eh, konference med ham. Where we could answer lots of questions. Hvor vi havde mulighed for at stille en masse spørgsmål. And he would answer like this very often. Og ofte ville han svare som følger. This week I believe this. I denne uge tror jeg dette. But next week I might believe something different. Men i næste uge kan jeg måske tro noget andet. I used to think this. Der var engang jeg tænkte det her. But now I believe this. Men nu tror jeg dette. He was on a constant journey as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Som disciple var han på en konstant rejse. I don't speak to you today about him because I think he had it all right. Jeg snakker ikke om ham i dag fordi jeg tror han havde alt på det rette. But I loved him because of this. Men jeg elskede ham på grund af det her. He loved Jesus Christ. Elskede ham fordi han elskede Jesus. He would give his all for Jesus han Christ. Han gav sit alt til Jesus Kristus. He'd be a fool for Jesus Christ. Han ville være et fjols for Jesus Kristus. He would go wherever he was sent. Han ville gå hvor end han blev sendt. Do whatever he was called to do. Gør alt det han blev kaldet til at gøre. Stumble in the darkness. Han ville falde og snuble i mørket. But would go on pressing on to know Christ better. Han ville fortsætte. Han ville presse på for at lære Kristus. And he never settled. Og han lod sig aldrig stille tilfreds. For words only. Med kun ord. He never settled. Han lod sig ikke stille tilfreds. For just talking of a historical Jesus. Med snak om en historisk Jesus. Time is almost up. Tiden løber. There's much more I could say. Der er meget mere jeg kunne sige. But we do need to proclaim this gospel with signs and wonders accompanying. Men vi skal proklamere evangeliet med under og med tegn. Just very quickly, would you look to the end of Romans chapter 15? Lad os se på lige til sidst Romerbrevet kapitel 15. You know I've got this brand new Bible. Jeg har jeg fået en helt ny Bibel. Always somewhere different on the page when you've got a new Bible, isn't it? Og tingene står altid en lille smule forskelligt øh, på, på siden når man får en ny Bibel. Paul writes here. Men Paulus står her. He says in verse uh, let's start at verse 19. I fra vers 19. By the power of signs and miracles. Ved kraften i tegn og under. Through the power of the Spirit. Ved Guds ånds kraft. He's talking about how he'd taken the message of the gospel. Han snakker om hvordan han har udbredt evangeliets budskab. From Jerusalem all the way round to Illyricum. Fra Jerusalem og vejen rundt helt til Illyrien. I have fully proclaimed the gospel of Christ. Har jeg fuldført forkyndelsen af evangeliet om Kristus. What he's saying here is this. Det han siger er dette. When I took the gospel. Da jeg tog evangeliet. Verse 18. I did not venture to speak of anything else except Christ. I vers 18. Jeg han dristede sig ikke til at snakke om andet end in Christus. But he didn't just talk about Christ. Men han snakkede ikke kun om Kristus. With signs and with miracles, with the power of the Spirit. Ved tegn og ved under i åndens kraft. He fully proclaimed the gospel. Der fuldførte han proklamationen af evangeliet. A word only gospel is not fully proclaiming it. Et evangelie kun af ord, det er ikke fuldt proklameret. A gospel that says only that Jesus Christ died on the cross to take away your sins. It's a wonderful gospel, but it's a partial gospel. Et evangelie der siger at Jesus Kristus døde på korset for at tage din skyld. Det er et fantastisk evangelie. The gospel men det er Jesus proclaimed is this. Det evangelie som Jesus han udbredte, det er det her. The kingdom of God is near. Guds rige er nær. Repent and believe the good news. Omvend jer og tro på de gode nyheder. The good news de for a leper was to be cleansed and healed. Gode nyheder for en spedalsk, det var at blive helbredt. A good the good news for a hungry person is to be fed. De gode nyheder for en der er sulten, det er at få mad. The good news for the widow of Nain was when her son was raised from the dead. Det gode budskab for enken fra Nain, det var at hendes søn blev opvakst fra de døde. The good news for blind Bartimaeus was that he lost the word blind from his title. Det gode nyheder for blinde Bartimaeus var at han mistede Titlen blind. With words and works and wonders, that's what John Wimber showed me. Med ord, handlinger og under, det er det som John Wimber han viste mig. 
Matthew 24 and verse 14 says this. Matthäus 24 vers 14. That Jesus will not return. Jesus will not return until the gospel of the kingdom for en Guds rigs evangelie has been proclaimed everywhere. Er blevet proklameret over det hele. I love the salvationist gospel. Jeg elsker frelsens evangelie. There is no gospel without the cross. Der er ingen evangelie uden korset. There om is no gospel without resurrection. Der er ingen evangelie uden opstandelse. But it's opstandelse. even more than that. Men der er endnu mere end det. It's the gospel that God is here. His kingdom is at hand. Det evangelie om at Gud han er her. Hans rige er nær. He rules over sin and sickness and demons and death and nature. Han hersker over synd og død og sygdom og natur og dæmoner. God so loved the cosmos that he sent his only son. Gud elskede kosmos så meget at han sendte sin eneste søn. And he's given that ministry to the church. Og han har givet den tjeneste videre til kirken. To us. Til os. That's why we need more. Det er derfor vi har brug for mere. What Simon was talking about just now. Det er det, som Simon han snakkede om i Bibeltimen. On the 17th of November 1997. Den 17. november 1997. John Wimber died from a brain hemorrhage after a fall. Det kan ikke passe. 1997 døde John Wimber af skader i hjernen efter et fald. He once famously remarked. Han sagde en gang meget berømt. When introduced at a conference. With blev, glowing words. Han blev introduceret med meget hedrende ord på en konference. I'm just a fat man trying to get to heaven. Jeg er bare en tyk mand der prøver at komme i himlen. He didn't think much of himself. Han havde ikke høje tanker om sig selv. He thought much of God. Men han havde høje tanker om Gud. Would you like to stand? Vi kan vinde med til at rejse op. In the spirit of what I've been talking about. Som følger den i ånden af det jeg har snakket om. We've got to at least do something at the end of the talk, haven't we? Så bliver vi næsten nødt til at gøre et eller andet her mod slutningen. And I know time is up. Og jeg ved godt at tiden er gået. I had to finish by 5 to 12. Jeg skulle være færdig 5 minutter i 12. And it's 4 minutes to 12. Og det er 4 minutter i 12 nu. You see I'm still a rebel. Men jeg er stadig oprørsk. I just want to pray for you for a minute, can I? Jeg vil gerne bede for jer. Have you got a minute? Har I tid til det? Tozer said. A.W. Tozer. A.W. Tozer has said, "The Christians, at Kristne, are holy rebels let loose on the earth. Er hellige rebeller der er blevet sat fri på jorden. I want to be a rebel for Jesus. Jeg vil gerne være en rebel en oprører for Herren. I want to be prepared to be a fool for Jesus. Jeg er klar til at være et fjols for Jesus. Do you? Er du? Er du? Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. You're already here, but come and do what you want to do. Men gør det du har lyst til at gøre. Just in this moment now. I det øjeblik. Put something within us. Sæt et eller andet i os. That will never go away. Som aldrig vil forsvinde. That we'd be lifelong learners of Christ. At vi må være livslange lærere og efterfølgere af Kristus. Pressing in for the more of Jesus. Så stadigvæk stræber efter mere af Jesus. The more of the Spirit. Mere af ånden. The more of your power, mere af din kraft. The more of everything you've got for us, mere af alt hvad du har til os. If you can take a beer guzzling, drug abusing musician, you can take any of us. Hvis du kan tage en øldrikkende musiker der er stofmisbruger, så kan du bruge en bær af os. Here we are, Lord. Og her er vi Gud. Fill us with your spirit. Fyld os med din ånd. In response to all we heard this morning. Og i respons til alt det vi har hørt i denne morgen. From Simon, from the scriptures. Fra Simon og fra skriften. From God, fra Gud. Give us more. Giv os mere. Thank you. Tak. And would you open our spiritual ears? Og vil du åbne vores åndelige ører? and our spiritual eyes of our only eye that we might hear and see what the father's doing at vi kan høre og se hvad faderen gør and join in og deltage i det with him med ham amen amen god bless you god velsignelse